Morning. <laughs> I was thinking it's going to be few people right now because it's still snowing. But then, as so I look around, it was like, a few seats are available. I thank God you're here. Amen? Amen. Even if it's uh, snowing, even if, I don't know, I think uh, it's not going to stop until this happens. But uh, praise God that everyone is here, and uh, today I'm going to talk another storm. I love, I love talking to storm. Last time I, I was here, uh, we talked about uh, storm when Jesus comes to storm, right? And today it's a different storm. And um, I think so far this is the hardest <laughs> uh, topic that... Uh, I don't know why I choose Jonah, though, but <laughs> I thank you for um, um, the people who prayed for me, and today is the day. Uh, I hope that uh, the message of uh, God will be a blessing to you guys, uh, and uh, if there's going to be gray area on it, I hope the Holy Spirit will fill it. Before we even start, uh, we will pray. Dear God, uh, thank you for this morning. Thank you today, dear God, that uh, even the worship songs that we have, dear God, we thank you for the warm um, um, environment that we have here inside. Thank you for your presence in the middle. Uh, guide me from error, dear God, and, uh, and bless everyone as they uh, hear your word. Dear God. Thank you, and we love you in Jesus' name. I can hear the, the cars passing <laughs> with the snow <laughs> slashing. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so the uh, title is Jesus and Jonah. Okay, uh, it's JJ. You know JJ? Huh? Who knows JJ here? Huh? It's a cocoa melon. It's Ezra's, uh, uh, the, the kid, the little kid. The name of the kid is JJ. No? No? Not your time? You're too old for that. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, Jesus and Jonah. So uh, Jonah is uh, a type of Christ, okay? That we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put this, uh, I call this um, principle for this uh, message right now because I don't want you guys to go beyond it, okay? So um, if it's a type, it points forward, okay? So, and it's prophetic, so will be mentioned in the New Testament, and it is uh, written in the Old Testament, okay? And here also, um, the antitype, who's an antitype? Uh, it's Jesus, is always greater to the type, okay? So if you, if you have it the other way, that's wrong, okay? So, because nobody's greater than Jesus, amen? Okay, so, uh, Jonah. Uh, the, the the dove. I don't know if you have the dove anyway. So the the Jonah's name means um, the dove. Uh, so we we have a lot of uh, symbols that pertains to to dove. Uh, most of it it pertains to peace, right? So Every time we drive the bus around downtown, we, every time you have uh, a TTC driver too that uh, will <laughs> will be in the opposite road, like, peace, peace. even if you're not in the mood, it's like peace. So <laughs> there's a symbol of peace, and it also appears uh, at Noah's Ark when the flood uh, subsides, and then uh, that's the time that. Uh, um, the dove has a leaf in his uh, her, I don't know, his mouth, and then um, that means that the wrath of God already uh, finished, and then uh, there's peace on earth. Another also, it's uh, you know when Jesus was baptized, right? Uh, uh, it's not a sign of peace, but a sign of the Spirit. Like uh, it's descent from heaven. Jesus, right? So there's more, uh, there's more, but uh, yeah, this uh, example, okay? 
Okay, uh, do you know the pirate song? Nobody has toddlers here. Who has toddlers here? Or who went to Sunday school? Because, you know, in the kindergartens, you know, I have, when I got saved, I'm already like 14. But when I, when I taught in the Sunday school um, kids, we used to have this, Jonah, Jonah, down in the deep blue sea, right? No. No. <laughs> I don't you guys. No. I know which church we're going. <laughs> There's only four chapters in Jonah, very short. And um, it's a very good message for analogy, but not typology. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, you know, how you love your enemy, uh, you know, being uh, a disobedient person to God, and then, you know, because like Jonah, we all wanted our enemy uh, perish, right? No? <laughs> it says, it says uh, you know, we are being sanctified. We're in the sanctification process, right? So, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's review some of um, the, the similarities, the events, the situations. This is not yet the proper sermon, but uh, uh, the, the similarities between the situation of Jonah and uh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, this is true or false. Okay. True or false. Did uh, Jesus come the storm? True. Right? true. Did Jonah come the storm? All this. They throw Jonah to the sea, but God come the storm. Okay. Well, you know your story. Okay. Did uh, Jesus sleep while the storm is going on? Did Jonah sleep while all the sailors and the storm is going on upstairs? Aha! Yes! True! Uh, we'll have a review of some of the says. And they're all, did Jonah and Jesus awaken by the sailors? True. More? No. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's say this is... Uh, for you to, you know, to get our brains, you know, working a little bit. Don't sleep, okay? Because you might uh, going to sleep and you will end up like you are in the belly of the fish. Like, why is this so dark, so hollow? And then just like where Eugene's uh, <laughs> message last time, you will shout, forgive me, Lord. <laughs> so please don't sleep, especially you guys. Right there. Okay. You can hear me right there? Yeah? Good, good, okay. So our text is um, Matthew chapter 12. Can we uh, pass that back? We will read it again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 41. And then this is the time that uh, the scribe and the Pharisees want, wanted to have more signs. So Jesus already performed a lot of miracles, right? But then... <laughs> This guy is it's very hard to be convinced with, right? So they, they wanted to have more sign. And then Matthew 12, 30 says, Then some of the scribes and the Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered, 39, to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. But what's this? No sign okay, will be given to it except the what? The sign of prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the sign of man be, be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So the men of Nineveh will rise up 
the judgment with this generation condemn it for they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold something greater than Jonah is here. Okay. So if we go back to uh, Jonah's uh, uh, story, so he received, okay, uh, you guys watch uh, with your kids the, um, what's that we use in the Sunday school? Superbook. I sure love Superbook. No? Uh, some of the parents, yes. Okay. Anyway, Jonah received uh, a command from God that he has to go to Nineveh to preach. But Jonah don't like it. Why? This is the mortal enemy of Israel. And he don't want these guys to be saved. So... I don't know which direction he, he went, but instead of heading east through God's command, he, hit, he hits west. So the story goes on, and then he went to the boat, and then the storm comes, and then, you know, the cast lots, who's, who's this fault, why, why? why this is happening, and then Jonah, uh, he, he said that it is because of me. So they threw Jonah to um, the sea. The sea comes, and big fish, good fish. I don't know what kind of fish. Uh, the Bible doesn't say. I don't want to speculate. It could be tilapia, you know. So uh, swallow Jonah, okay? So the one in... <laughs> the one in Superbook, it looks like tilapia. Yeah, it's true. Watch a Superbook. And it, <laughs> the scales and everything, right? Is that the school teacher? It looks like tilapia. But it's not. <laughs> it could be a whale or it could be a great fish. Okay? So, um, let's go to Jonah verse 14. Uh, if you can flash that. We'll read this. We have a lot of verses. Uh, so, you know, read with me with this until uh, to the 17 at the moment. Uh, ready to begin? Could be a very good uh, uh, analogy uh, <laughs> message or uh, not typology, but uh, here we can see in verse 14 he says, um, 14 again, can you flash it? Right here. Verse 14 Therefore they called out to the Lord, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not on us innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased. So they cast, they know that it's Jonah's. You know, fault why he is on the boat, and then so they pick up Jonah and hurled him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. And the man feared the Lord. He said, this, "There's a little revival here, right? Uh, with this uh, unbelievers, this pagan sailors, a little revival. They 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 don't know. Only Jonah here is a is a believer, and then because maybe Jonah told them uh, that you know God is this and that, and then uh, th these people got saved." They feared the Lord. They repented. Uh, and then they threw Jonah to the sea. The Bible then does not specify that Jonah died, really. There's no, like, specific verse that says, you know, like, you know. So, um, but here, in the preceding verses, we can see it that Jonah being so hopeless. Hopeless. When you're hopeless, it's like, you know, all human, you know, efforts is useless. 
only the intervention of a supernatural thing could save you. And this is what happened to Jonah. So let's continue to chapter 2. So a great fish swallowed Jonah and the Lord, right? Um, then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. So he's inside the fish. And then I called out to the Lord out of my distress. And he answered me out of the belly of the shoal. I cried and you heard my voice. Verse 3. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas. And the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows pass over me. Describing his watery ex experience, you know. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. Remember that uh, he went away from God. Uh, then he, he realizes that the Lord expelled him. Right? The water closed in over me, verse 5, to take my life, and deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever, yet you brought up my life from the pit. When my life was fainting away, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, but I with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. You know, when, when we are in a near-death experience, when we, we, we don't have, when we have the time in our life that n nothing we can do. It's like, again, hopeless, right? So, the... Being Jonah as hopeless in the belly of the fish, that really signifies, you know, the death of, of Christ. Without supernatural, you know, uh, supernatural intervention, Jonah could have died. I mean, first he was thrown into the sea. I don't know if right away the fish swallowed him. And inside the belly of the fish, don't ask me how he breathed. Don't ask me if there's oxygen inside the belly of the fish. But as he describes his experience from, from Jonah chapter 1 to, 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 to verse 7, it's like he's almost dead. He almost died. He was like, he's in that stage already. I don't know if you have a near um, uh, death experience, but I know, I know some, some of us here, uh, uh, we have a near death experience. I, my near death experience is um, we usually make a bow after uh, the near death experience, right? Like we, Lord, we will do this and we will do this. No, I usually have my near death experience and then I made a bow. Unlike Jonah here, uh, he made a bow uh, during his uh, near death experience. So my dad is a, a heavy machinery operator, like you know, and mechanic, a uh, bulldozer operator. Um, our town is a vast uh, town in the Philippines. It's bordering uh, Tagum City, which is Square Eugene's place. That's Davao, Davao uh, del Norte. <laughs> with, with all these mountain rains, forests, you know, wildlife, name it. Different ethnic groups, you know, different languages, you know, crops, vegetables, name it. We have it. Bananas, pineapple, you know, have it. Scenery, very beautiful. And we also have the leftist. You know what, what the leftist is? 
the, the NPAs, uh, people's armies. <laughs> so <laughs> one night, my dad uh, is conductor working overtime, and uh, they're bulldozing a road that leads to the market. So we call it the farmer's road. And suddenly, a group of armed men uh, stopped them. Shut down the bulldozer, and there's another equipment. I forgot uh, what my dad mentioned about the other uh, equipment. Burn the equipment. Then my dad and his conductor, they were held away from the bulldozer, blindfolded, on their knees, hopeless. My dad told me, I think that's it. I think he, he told me that all I can do that time is pray. Pray. Beg for his life. Pray to God. He never told me what his prayer is. A day after my dad resigned to work, uh, they got released uh, from that uh, armed man. His near-death experience made him change. He got softer. My dad is disciplinarian. He got softer. He stopped drinking. He stopped smoking. So, you know, when we experience something, you know, that hopeless, we, we made a vow uh, to God. And this is, this is Jonah here. Okay? So he made a vow uh, to God. Uh, maybe I think the, the vow of Jonah here is that, yeah, I will go to Nineveh and, and preach your word. Right? So His experience in the belly of the fish at the sea, being hopeless, we could call it as the death of Jesus Christ. We can, you know, as a type of Christ. So in, in um, you may not agree on this, I don't know, uh, if you say that Jonah really died, but I'm, I'm not going to dwell on that. The most important thing here is it points forward to the death of Christ. Mark 15, verse 37. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breath. His last. Another verse. Verse 45. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. This is when um, uh, Joseph asked um, uh, Pilate, that if they could have the body of Christ, then it has to be sure that he's dead. He died. So the pilot wants to have confirmation, right? So he asked the centurion, said, and the centurion con confirmed that really Jesus died on the cross. That's why they gave the body to Joseph. As much as I wanted to preach uh, about, you know, Jonah's being near death experience and will die, I, I, I wanna, I wanna show you what's the importance of Jesus dying on the cross. I think this, that's the most important one. So the 
First Corinthians 15 verse 3. For I delivered to you as of first importance that also I received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. Died for us. Died for you, 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 and me. Very specific, no gray area. Unlike, you know, Jonah's uh, doesn't really say that Jonah died. Here, actual death of our Savior. Jesus' death at the cross is so important because without the shedding of the blood, there is no, there's no remission of sin. I don't care if Duna died or not. I care more that Jesus died really in the cross, actual death. Amen? Hebrews 9, 22, indeed under the law, Almost everything is purified with blood before you have to uh, give sacrifice in order for them, uh, you know, to be forgiven to their sins, right? And without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 10.10, 10, and by what that will, we have been sanctified, we have been holy, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The ultimate sacrifice. The one and only to save us from our sins. Died on the cross. God with his only begotten son given unto us only to die in the cross. A perfect lamb died in our place without blemish, without sin, righteous. So what? So we can live forever. We escape eternal damnation because of his death. And yet sadly, uh, some of us Christians, you know, uh, we, uh, we sometimes get the license because <laughs> we are saved and you know, we just, you know, I, I God will forgive me. So it's okay to, to do this. Even it's not pleasing to the sight of God. So Jesus' death is very important. As Jonah is hopeless in the belly of the fish. Jonah is buried in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Don't ask me what he ate there. <laughs> Could be small intestines, <laughs> uh, <laughs> seafood. But, you know, with man, it's not possible. But with God, it's possible. He don't need oxygen. He don't need food. He don't need anything inside to survive. He only need God. Amen? So, Verse 17, the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the middle of the fish three days 
and three nights. He got buried there three days and three nights. Just like Jesus. In Matthew 12, verse 40. Or just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. First Corinthians. Now we can go to Mark 15 since it flashes first. Now Mark 15, verse 42, and when the evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arithmetia, a respected member of the council, was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus Christ. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he, that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph, Bought a linen shroud and take, taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut off the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. I think you, you know the story with this, how Jesus got buried, right? They married Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, so... Where he was laid. There's a witness. It's a witness. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. If you can flash that. It's just a continuation of First Corinthians earlier. It says here. That he was buried. Stop there because we'll reserve the last one for later. That he was buried. Throughout history, there has been contested point of, of the story. Some say Jesus didn't really die. On the cross, maybe he passed out, was you know, taken down, he just fainted, and he recovered somewhere else. You know. I would say dogs uh, eat his body, and what kind of sources they have. But from the earliest of days, the burial of Jesus was as an important and well recorded. His burial mat matters so much because only a did Jesus saves. Amen? So if, if you die, you get bird, of course, right? So unless, you know, some of us here don't want to get bird. <laughs> when you die, you just sleep my corpse, <laughs> corpse there. When you die, you get bird. Only a dead and buried Jesus experienced the full wrath of God against our sin. Remember, he died for our sin. And only a dead and buried Jesus resurrected. If he did not die, and get buried and no resurrection, then as First Corinthians 15, 4 says, let's go there. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. Jesus did not die. Did not bury. 
and then resurrected useless this useless so we got you know uh, Jonah three days three nights in the middle of the fish he got buried there and Jesus burial so now let's let's go to the final stage Jonah chapter 2 verse 1 And the fish, what? Spitted, <laughs> vomited. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. Jonah, uh, Jonah chapter two verse ten. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it what? Vomited Jonah. Just like that. Three days, three nights, he's a goner, he's gone. Voila! Jonah! Resurrected! What's inside the belly of the fish? What is more like, like uh, our, our stomach? What, what's inside our stomach? Acid. Juna could have been uh, an albino when he went out, when he was spitted. No, it's just speculation. That's not uh, part of the thing, right? Because uh, you know, acid it will burn your and you get be like clean or you get whitish. I know how Juna looks like after the <laughs> he was vomited. But he got resurrected. Sign of resurrection. Three days, three nights inside the belly of the fish. You, if you watch Netflix, we, my son Ezra, we watch uh, Sea Beast. <laughs> yeah, Alex, you watch with uh, <laughs> uh, your grandson too. And uh, this, this guy and um, a small girl swallow, uh, swallowed. Um, uh, swallowed by the big fish. But Jonah, here, right? Three days, three nights in the belly of the fish and then vomited. I'm back. And then, let's, let's, let's go to Jonah. Let's read it again. And then Jonah, Jonah chapter 2, verse um, verse 11. Let's continue to read um, the, those verses to chapter 3. What happened is that uh, uh, second time, you know, uh, Jonah asked, I mean, the, the God asked Jonah to, Preach to Nineveh. And then he went there, and you know the story. Uh, there's a great revival of the city. Right? And then, you know, Jonah is still, I don't know. If you know the story, Jonah is still not a very good prophet to the enemy. So he encamp, you know, outside the city. He wants, he's there watching, you know, watching what happened to the city. Because he wanted the city to, God will just, you know, judge them, you know. That's why I told you it's a very good uh, analogy uh, <laughs> message in terms of our enemies, right? <laughs> Oh, 
Only a supernatural event like this would just shut up, shut up me or us, you know, thinking that he's inside the belly of the fish, three days and three nights, how he survived, you know, that he got vomited, he's alive, he preached the word. But that's not it, that's not the point. The point is, it points forward that after three days and three nights, Jesus Christ will rise from the dead. First Corinthians chapter 15 again. Verse 4, that he was buried, verse earlier, in uh, verse 3, was he, he died, he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scripture. And Jonah, after three days and three nights inside the belly of the fish, he got resurrected. He's back. That's a type. That's why Jonah is a type of Christ. Because of what happened uh, to Jonah in his time. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 19. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise it. If it's true, then the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are, we are of all people most to be pitied. So if Christ did not really die, buried, and resurrected, in Bisaya makaluluoy. In Tagalog, kawawa. Kawawa. Wala tayong pag-asa. Because Christ died, buried, and resurrected, we have this hope that when we die, we will be resurrected with Him. Amen? Jesus said, because I live, you also will live. If he could have stayed, you know, dead, then <laughs> we don't have that. We don't have to do this. But because our only Savior, the only begotten Son, is resurrected, we have this hope that someday when I die, I know. Will be there with him. I thought I'm going to preach the whole Bible. 
Because this is this, this, the, the center message of the Bible, right? Uh, the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It's, it's, if you believe in this, you will be saved. But this is Jonah, you know, pointing forward to what will happen to Jesus in the future. So I don't know what, what you get uh, from this, out of this. But I, I'm, I just hope and pray that uh, this Christmas... We remember that someone uh, was born in a virgin, also prophesied, and then he died, and he got buried, and resurrected. That it's we're not we're, we're just not gonna stop there. But wherever we are at work. Or, you know, in our family, that the resurrected Christ will be seen in our lives. Not the dead Christ. We have this joy. We have this excitement to serve Him. Because we have this hope. Amen? Amen? you're here first time and you know you haven't had encounter you know Jesus uh, when Jonah uh, asked the people of Nineveh to repent they repented and they got saved from the wrath of God also in our generation our sins need to be we have to ask forgiveness of our sins. If you haven't have Christ yet, repent, repent, and let Christ enter into your heart. I guess that's, that's the most important message during this Christmas for all, for all of us. Not the, the gifts, not not. Not what we receive, not what, you know, but it's Christ. The best gift ever. Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. And give you peace. Yes.